raisin paintings. It's raining. Oh man, you just smell that fried food. Okay, let's go. Come on, run, run, run. I'm recording. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. It's raining, huh? Oh. Yankee Doodle went to town. Raising canes. Yeah, come here. I'm not really hungry. What? Like, I'm not. First time trying it fresh. Okay, no, 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 please, here. Try raisin cane. First time. No, 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 I'm happy with it all. Thank you. Oh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. the cheese on So hungry. It's part of the trip for in the hospital. Madison freaked out because what you yeah, because what you call it told her that we we're doing 130, 135. And we we're just flying along. Oh Oh, and she messaged. Yeah, she's like, where are you guys going? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Alright, so here's another adding bonus into our vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a CT scan done, an EKG, EKG done. Are you feeling better? Because you're looking better. Because you're looking better. That was so weird. Like, I'm gonna just... Is that was a panic attack? Like, I'm gonna be like... Say something to the kids because I'm going to put in the group chat. I love you guys so much. I'm sorry if I made you guys worry. You too, my love. <sighs> Hospital in the U.S. That is messed up shit. I can't believe it. We had to call 911. Yeah, like it was nuts. First time I really had these things put on me. <sighs> so at the start, when she started just feeling chest pains, and she said the her chest was tightening up, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was just the food after we got raisin canes. And then after she started screaming and saying she was numb and like, her voice, she, she couldn't start talking. I started getting like really worried. And then um, after she said, let's go t um, to the hospital, um, I was like really freaked out. I was crying, uh, crying. And then um, it ended up taking us to not a hospital. Uh, it was this medical place. And then we called the police and then firefighters showed up. And then after they showed up, they did her blood pressure and everything. Everything was okay. And then we went to like this, um, we're, uh, we saw an ambulance in front of us. We were gonna take it, but then they kind of just like ignored us. And you know, like my heart was racing. I didn't know what to do. And then um, after that, we got to the hospital and then, you know, uh, she was in safe hands. So I kind of stopped worrying once we got to the hotel. And then we went to the Mall of America 
and um, yeah, we found out that she was fine. Aww. I mean, my blood pressure was off the roof. It was going through your mind. I thought you were going to die. Aww. But it was okay. Were you sad? Yeah. Aww. Are you happy that I'm here? Yeah. Aww, and I'm not dead? Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Hey guys, so I just wanted to speak on the situation about what happened when I was in Minneapolis. So it started off with me when we were driving and it was just after raising canes. And what happened was mom started saying how she felt some tightening and I started to feel like worried because I was like, what do you mean tightening? And I guess we thought she was having an allergic reaction to the canes, but yeah. And then after we were driving and when we were driving, that's when she like yelled like hospital. So then we tried mapping a hospital, but ended up taking us to like some like hardware center or like healthcare center for supplies or something. And then after, in uh, we went to the we called nine one one, and mom said that she was feeling really tight and she couldn't move. And then Taylor and Ryder started crying, and I was trying to be there for them because I knew that that wasn't the end. So Taylor ended up crying so bad she threw up, so I was trying to be there for her. And then, yeah, and then Ryder started crying. So then I tried, I was trying to be there for Ryder and Taylor. Douglas was sleeping the whole time. And then they were just saying how they thought it was an anxiety or panic attack. I was trying to keep composed because the firefighter said that I might need to drive if my mom went into the ambulance. I feel like they should have taken the ambulance. But that's my opinion. Um, I just felt like it would have been better if she caught the set up to an IV and stuff right away rather than driving in rush hour to the hospital not knowing what time we were gonna get there um i think they should took that but and then we drove to the hospital and then i rolled my mom in um it was kind of hard for me to talk because my voice was really raspy and i was crying uh yeah so i didn't really know what to say i kind of choked on what i was saying and yeah um i was sad for a bit after that too because i wanted to stay i like the hospital but i knew like it would have just been more efficient if there wasn't a lot of people in the room and stuff and like the doctors could do what they had to do and i was trying to make taylor and ryder feel better and stuff yeah but really sad but love you mom hi guys so today i'm going to be talking about the situation that happened with my mom in the in the states so basically we just got done eating raisin canes and we were driving to go to um tj maxx so as we were driving i was like slowly falling asleep until i heard my mom scream um, I can't breathe. So then I'm like, what happened? And then I heard her scream again. And she said, she was like, babe, call the call. No, babe, call 911. Um, so that's when, like when things are serious. And then she was like, no, like we have to go to the hospital. So we were searching up, um, a hospital, but then they ended up bringing us to like, a medical place where they like keep all the hospital stuff and stuff um 
so then we ended up calling 911 and then they sent a fire truck and then they like checked her and stuff they said she was having a panic attack and then like i was like i cried i was crying too too hard that i threw up and it came out of my nose i threw up that bad um so yeah they said that she was having a panic attack but she could still feel like the pain so we took her to the ambul the hospital and we were all kind of worried um so we took her to the hospital uh and we were kind of worried but then we ended up we went to the mall after because our aunties and uncles they didn't want us to like stress too much about it so that's what we did when she was in the hospital and she came back and she just had um her implant wait can i say that on here um her implant erupted and then it got to like her bloodstream i think i don't know something like that but it was really scary um bye guys hello everybody so we're back from our vacation we're good yep. and as most of you guys know we had um i had a visit to the hospital so it happened um after raising canes and so wait what did we do that day so we went to the outlet we went to twin city outlet um and then after that we went to raising canes as you guys seen and after we left raising canes we were going to go to tj maxx or target i don't know we were going to do some shopping and on the freeway, like not even like, I think it was like five minutes into driving, not even, I started to feel like I was choking. Like it all started over here. And I thought maybe, okay, maybe it's my necklaces. So I like tried to adjust my necklaces and I was like, oh, it's not working. I started to get hot. So then I put my hair up and... It wasn't working. I then started to feel my arms go numb and my face. And then I remember telling David, um, wait, something doesn't feel right. And he didn't really take me seriously. He just kept driving. And I was like, I started to feel the numbness more as it went down my arms. My hands started to clench to the point where I couldn't open them. And I was like, okay, no, something's wrong. You need to take me to a hospital. And I started panicking a little. And then, of course, he's panicking. And I just kept saying, I need to go to the hospital. Bring me to the hospital. And I, like, probably couldn't even talk, like, like, I was already, like, not slurring, but I couldn't really talk. So, he then tries to Google the hospital. Or, wait, did you try on your phone first? Yeah. So, he tried on his phone, then it went to our, our screen in the truck, and then it took us to, and mind you, he's, like, driving like a maniac. And, like, to the point where, like, no Madison got notified on her Life360. Anywho, and then it took us to a hospital supply store. And then I really started to panic because my legs went numb, my head was hurting, I felt my heart pounding. Like, it just, like, it spread throughout my whole body. And I thought I was having a stroke. And I was like, okay, fuck it. Like, call 911. Like, we can't be driving around looking for a hospital. I was thinking. So everybody's calling 911. And we were just parked in a parking lot. And they came pretty fast, hey? 
Yeah, the fireman got there quick. Yeah, the fireman, yeah. Like, it was, like, less than five minutes. And by that time, as we were waiting in the parking lot, everybody's, like, crying. Everybody's in distress. Everybody is scared. And, of course, me thinking, like, okay, my headspace, like, I'm still coherent. Like, I was telling them, you guys, like, this is my time. Like, I'm going to die. And I was saying my love yous and take care of each other and blah, blah, blah. Which didn't help the situation. It just got everybody more upset. And then, anyways, the fireman came and checked my vitals. My blood pressure was super high. It was like 180 over 130. And um, I checked my heart rate. It was at, I think they said 170. It was high. I checked my oxygen levels. It was okay. And they were playing it off as if I had a panic attack. But like, have you ever had a panic attack? I was like, not like this. And they were like, were you guys fighting? Were you thinking about anything? I said, no, we were okay. Like, everybody was okay. We just came back from eating Raisin Cane's. And mind you, I'm like talking like, like, I was like talking like this. Like, I couldn't move my lips. I couldn't move my lips, right, babe? I wish you got a video because I'm like curious as to what I what I look like but he was even saying like I was having a stroke so then the firefighter again pulls David and says like oh she's just having a panic attack we deal with the we, we deal with these like a thousand times a day and I was like no this is not a panic attack the ambulance wasn't there yet so the firefighters were like okay you can either drive to a hospital or wait for the ambulance. Me feeling all numb and in pain. No, they said you'd be faster than the ambulance. We're going to cancel it and just take care of yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I didn't hear that. But the ambulance pulled up, tried to reach them, tried to talk to these guys, and they just took off. Yeah, David, like, stopped right behind them and, like, got out of the truck and, like, ran up to the ambulance and they, like, drove off. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever. At least now the address that we have entered into our GPS is an actual hospital so what it took us like 12 13 minutes to get there yeah and instantly i they got a wheelchair i was in emergency they checked me in like literally after a minute or two after checking me in they got my blood work and this is at fairview hospital and in um, minneapolis in minneapolis and they take my blood work and they're like and they, like, asked me what was going on, blah, 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 explain the situation to them. And then they're like, okay, we're getting you into a CT scan, full body CT scan. Within five minutes, I was getting a CT scan. Crazy. Um, they used a special machine to put that thing in your vein. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the guy couldn't find my vein to put the uh, IV in or whatever. And they had this machine, like this ultrasound machine to look at my veins and, Yeah. He found my vein easy. And then, so after my CT scan, we went into another room. We waited, 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 waited. Doctor said, just like I knew, your heart, your lungs, like everything, you're young and healthy. And I was like, what? And I was like, wait, that's if this was a panic attack. And he's like, but what happened, babe? Your implant ruptured. My fucking implant ruptured, uh, which caused my body to go into shock. So I guess the pressure in the implant, poof. And, you know, I talked to my surgeon and they said that, you know, there's at least, I have cohesive gel, but he did mention that there is uh, at least like 10 cc's of saline that's still in there, which probably, you know, caused like, well, after the rupture, it just like spread throughout my body. That's why I started to feel it here first. It rose up to my head, down to my arms, and then my stomach, my hips, and then right down to my legs. And he said it wasn't life-threatening um, because I wasn't sure, like, do I need to go back to Winnipeg like ASAP? Again, mind you, we are in USA. Thank God for insurance. Um... But he said it wasn't life-threatening. Just call your surgeon the next day and go from there. So hours go by and obviously the pain and the numbing 
and the tingling and all that stuff subsides. We go back to the hotel, rest for the remaining of the night. Um, the kids were not at the hotel um, after they dropped me off. Thank God for um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, grandma, everybody. The whole his side was all there for us, and um, we're able to take the kids and distract them and take them to Mall of America. Um, but yeah, so by the time we got back to the hospital, um, it was late at night, and I was able to see the kids. And mind you, Douglas slept through the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was nice to give them. The good news that it wasn't a stroke and it wasn't anything life-threatening and that I'm still alive. And the hospital was selling her blood, kept coming to take it, saying they lost it, even though they're selling it to other people probably. Yeah, because I'm so healthy. And they're just taking their sweet time trying to charge us a, a fortune to be there. Yeah. We had to tell them that, hey, we got little kids at a hotel by themselves and we need to be out of here like now. And all of a sudden, the doctor's appears, and he has all the reports and everything. And yeah. And we were free to go, finally. And they made her really comfortable with the TV and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And they didn't let me find you right away. They're trying to keep me from this. They can keep you as long as they can. Yeah, I had to, like, remind the nurse. I was like, uh, can my husband come here now? Anyways, I thank God I'm alive. And it was pouring rain. It was. And it was the shittiest day that we were away. there. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like a godsend kind of thing because I feel like I wouldn't have gotten that care if that happened here. How did my implant rupture? I do not know. Um, my hospitals don't have parking. That is just stupid to me. There should be parking, big parking lots for hospitals so people can park and go to them. It's ridiculous. There's no parking there. There's no parking? No parking. So where did you park? I parked somewhere I shouldn't, but I did. Oh, uh, that's my story. How did you feel, babe? Were you scared? Were you sad? Yeah. Were you crying? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was crying, and I remember him trying to kiss me, and I couldn't move. But he was trying to kiss me. He was so sweet, babe. I've never had that experience. Um, again, I feel like it was meant to be to have it done or to have that happen in America as opposed to Canada. Um, because honestly, I'd probably still be waiting for a CT scan. If anything, they probably wouldn't even have like given me a CT scan and just probably played it off as if it was, um, an anxiety attack, but I knew damn well it was an anxiety attack. And yeah, but at least I'm here, I'm alive, I'm here with my kids. Obviously now I have to, and I was breastfeeding and I had to like stop breastfeeding Douglas like instantly. And since then it's been pretty rough. Like Now we need to go fund me to pay for all this. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Not kidding, but... You know, it kind of sucks that an unexpected um, thing like this happening and, you know, it has to come out of your pocket. The only thing they cover is, is the implants because implants are lifetime warranty. But mind you, that's probably the cheapest thing. It's the labor. It's the anesthesia. It's the care for after is what cost the most so we're gonna get some roofies and it's gonna be cheap like under 100 bucks for a jar of roofies i'm sure we can find a pedophile out there that's got some roofies kicking around we're just gonna take some roofing all and just, just i'll say thousands them. of dollars <laughs> yeah so we're gonna start a gofundme page just kidding <laughs> not kidding <laughs> that's what happened to us in america Again, she had a lot of stress on her plate while we were out there, but I don't think it was that stress. It wasn't David that stressed me out. No, it was kids that stressed me out. It was the kids. 
some dramatic stuff happening while we're on vacation but whatever that's that's a whole nother story but yeah other than that like again i don't know what, what caused it don't know what caused it but glad it's like nothing major am i good yeah. what else do you want to say Ray? that's about it wait why can't i what's going on here we went we saw Watch the videos. We got Valley Fair videos coming up. Yep. All kinds of fun stuff that we did on the trip. Still trying to recover from the trip. First week back at work. Takes a toll on you. It's smoky right now because all the wildfires going on everywhere. And yep. uh, right now there's just smoke everywhere outside. And it's hard to breathe, coughing, sore eyes, tired. Yeah. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. So I'm really starting to love winter. No bugs, no fires, no smoke, no sunburn. Oh, I hate the cold. The colder it is, the better it is. Freeze everything. All the dust is frozen. Everything's frozen. You don't see bums anywhere. Yeah, you do. You, don't you see still see them. Anywhere. <sighs> yeah. Well, it's right around the corner. Yeah. Don't worry. Winter soon. Yeah. If it wasn't so smoky, we'd be working on the Escalade right now, but... That'll be another video for you guys. I think the smoke's not going to leave until Saturday night. Well, as long as it's gone by f Monday. I'm off Monday. Off Monday, hopefully I can do something with the kids. I don't know, take them to the splash pad or something. Because mm -hmm. again, summer is almost over. It is almost over. We're almost in September. Kids start school in a few weeks. And that's it. And that's it. That's it. That's all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Alrighty, guys. Ciao for now.